Welcome to Western Perspective, I'm Grace Harrington. The voice to parliament debate drags on as support for the yes vote continues to slip in opinion polls. It serves as a political alarm bell for the Albanese government as the no campaign continues to gain traction. With a referendum date yet to be announced, the question remains as to whether the delay strategy will be detrimental to the Yes campaign's success or its failure. Here is political commentator Peter Kennedy's analysis. The campaign for the Indigenous Voice is reaching a critical stage. Indigenous Affairs Minister Linda Burney was speaking at the National Press Club uh, a few days ago and uh, set out the goals of The Voice and she said in the uh, criteria included employment, education, health and housing. It was to give the uh, voice a bit of direction which has been lacking up until now. She said they're the sort of things that uh, she expects the voice to look at to improve uh, those uh, areas for uh, Aboriginal people around Australia. The key is to give the, give the yes case a bit of impetus and that's what uh, she was trying to do because there's a feeling at the moment that the no case uh, led by opposition leader Peter Dutton is, uh, is gaining ground and in fact uh, is leading in a number of states. So the, the issue, very, very important, a critical stage. No date's been set for the referendum. The tip is that it will be in mid-October. Uh, so there's still a lot of time to go for campaigning on both sides. Both Linda Burney and Anthony Albanese are giving greater attention to Western Australia. Uh, the, the Prime Minister, of course, has uh, been in Perth over the weekend. Very important, uh, looking at uh, the voice, but other issues as well. So uh, the, the profile, I guess, the profile of the federal government in the West has uh, increased uh, and obviously the, the voice is uppermost in their minds. The, the voice itself has, has significant support issues right now. Do you concede that you should have perhaps split both questions up? Uh, why did you package it all in one place? You well, the parliament did that. The parliament did that and there were no amendments to it. And I make this point. Uh, no amendments were moved in the Senate. There were no votes in the Senate on this. Uh, or indeed, uh, or indeed, the process uh, that occurred uh, was very clear. But it's a process uh, that led up to 2017, uh, where First Nations people gathered at Uluru and said that they wanted constitutional recognition that was spoken about since the last century under the Howard government. And the form they wanted was an advisory group, a voice that could be listened to about matters that directly affect them. The voice is just the means to the end. The end is closing the gap on education outcomes, on health, on housing, on incarceration rates. We have in this country an eight year life expectancy gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians. We need to do better. We have more chance, more chance of, uh, of uh, uh, if you're a young Indigenous male, more chance of going to jail than going to university. We need to do better. And, and more than, you are more than twice as likely to take your own life if you are an Indigenous person than a non-Indigenous person. I'll make this point about uh, the, the voice as well. Um, that there are some who are now saying had the opportunity uh, and the almost decade they were in government to legislate uh, on the voice, uh, who are now saying they want it to be legislated rather than in the constitution. Uh, putting in the constitution doesn't detail the operations and structure and functions of the voice. That's very clear from the third part of what's put forward. But it seems to me there's an inconsistency there uh, that was pointed out in an article by uh, Chris Kenny today in The Australian, uh, that uh, if you say that it's okay to legislate it, uh, that is what is going to happen. The details will be legislated uh, after the referendum uh, with a successful referendum later this year. And I'll give, um, I'll give the Premier uh, an opportunity to, to speak on these issues as well. Uh, just firstly on The Voice, obviously that's an incredibly important part of our journey as a nation. The Voice is a very simple proposition. It's about recognition, it's about consultation. And from that perspective, 
it is no reason why anyone, any reasonable thinking person, shouldn't want to get behind this initiative. This is going to be an important step for our country, and I urge everyone to take the opportunity to vote yes in the voice referendum. So, uh, a critical stage, as I say, the 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 voice, the yes case, well resourced. Uh, from the uh, from the resources sector particularly, but uh, big companies have poured in a lot of money. Uh, it's not to say that the no case isn't well resourced either, but uh, the the campaign reaching a critical stage. And uh, as far as the the future is concerned, just what it means, uh, people are uh, increasingly focusing on it now. Uh, but still a lot of work to be done. Uh, still a lot of promotion from both sides, uh, and it, it promises to be a critical time for the uh, for the country. But also Western Australia will be critical in the in the voice. It appears at this stage that in Western Australia the no case uh, has the numbers, uh, and uh, w when you look at the uh, referendum overall, you have to have a majority of voters in a majority of states. If Western Australia decides not to support the voice, then uh, you're looking at uh, two other states that have a similar view and the voice uh, will be defeated, regardless of the number, aggregate number of votes. Peter Kennedy, WAMN News. That was Peter Kennedy. You can read more of our weekly premium news stories now on WAMN Extra News Club, supporting independent local news and keeping democracy strong. And now here's Dr. Andrew Miller with his weekly medical and news commentary. Hi, thanks for your time. Really interesting report come out from the AMAWA this week uh, survey that's been completed by 700 junior doctors who are the backbone of the work done in the uh, public hospital system where they work under the supervision of specialist doctors but they do a large part of the um, diagnosis, uh, the prescription of treatment and the procedures that are, are done on public patients. And you know that we've had a lot of problems in this system, uh, problems with um, burnout with people being underpaid and at a time when we're competing um, with other states and in fact with jurisdictions around the world for future medical workforce uh, it's really important that these things improve there's some green shoots there uh, the, the um, north metro health service in particular seems to have turned its results around uh, to a degree and uh, still some problems in the child and adolescent health service which of course runs the, the perth children's hospital um, with the way that our uh, doctors in training and junior doctors there are being treated. So I think what this tells us is that if we do work hard on looking after our employees, if we do focus on their welfare, if we do consider that uh, work-life balance is a really important part of having a healthy uh, working population, then these things can be improved. It's not just uh, bad conditions that we have to accept. So... Um, uh, I guess I want to give credit uh, to the organisations that are doing well to look after their people, tell the others to put their socks up because we live in an isolated part of the world. We can't go to another city to get our health care. Uh, in fact, our entire very remote state relies on the um, tertiary and uh, even more specialised uh, facilities that are available in our city. And so we need to really look after people who have roots here so that they don't decide to take their careers elsewhere. It's just as true in healthcare as it is in uh, the mining industry and agriculture. It's just as true uh, for nurses as it is for doctors and just comes down to doing the right thing and looking after people and also acting up against government uh, bureaucracy where that has bad outcomes for people. And uh, we've seen that also with the Robo Debt Royal Commission that came out this week, any number of people uh, could have blown the whistle on the fact that that was just being cruel and that those outcomes were not the way that they should be. Uh, and yet people still stuck with just applying that process no matter what the outcomes were. So it makes us think about the way we run large government organisations. It's also a message to those that think that they uh, can kind of tolerate this sort of um, problem as long as it's not happening to them. Well, eventually, hopefully, uh, the chickens come home to roost and the truth comes out about the administration of government things that are not going right. So whilst it's uh, some good news there in the health system, at the end of the day, we can't afford to relax because it's about the way that our families uh, and our uh, more vulnerable in our community get treated within our system and they deserve us to be applying all of our energy all of the time to making sure that it's working as well as it can be for the taxpayer dollars. Thanks for asking your time. 
That was Dr. Andrew Miller, and that's Western Perspective for this week. Until next Sunday evening, it's back to you, Ivan and Melly. Thanks, Grace. And that's our weekly news and current affairs. We have the latest news on our website, wamnnews.com.au. Don't forget to subscribe to the WAMN Extra News Club so we can continue our work in the community. Full details on wamnnews.com.au forward slash news forward slash extra. From Melly and myself, wish you good health, good night. See you next Sunday. Thanks for watching.